Hey, this is Christian Buckley with another MVP Buzz Chat interview, and I'm talking today with Dara. Hello. Hi, Christian. How are you doing? Uh, it's uh, evening over here. I'm sure you're doing fine. It should be afternoon over there. Yeah, it is. It's just after lunch, though. I've not. It's like the uh, I, you know forgot that it was time to eat. So uh, <laughs> I've got another call behind this as it happens. So my my late afternoon first meal of the day. But uh, yeah, I, I guess when you're doing something you love, you just forget to it. <laughs> Yes, it's uh, and then usually if, they, if there's not the stomach pangs or something to to notify, it's like having notifications. I'm focused. I'm working. If there's not the notifications coming in, I get the body notification. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, why don't you introduce yourself? Who you are? What you do? And where you're located? Yeah, sure thing. Uh, I'm Dara Oladapo. I am a well, I'm a programmer, a DevOps dude. Well, that's what I call myself. I I don't call myself a DevOps engineer. But I just love DevOps. Uh, but mainly I tag myself as a programmer, someone who just likes to write code to solve problems. Uh, I currently work at Kiwi Limited in the UK as a principal technical learning specialist. Well, that's a mouthful. Uh, what that means is that I train people every day on how to write code, how to do DevOps. Uh, I'm mainly responsible for uh, creating learning pathways and teaching them to people who just come into the IT industry, fresh from universities and also doing some specialized courses for uh, trainees coming from different organizations like that. So I mainly teach C Sharp, uh, ASP.NET, Azure, and DevOps from day to day. Uh, outside of work, I enjoy music, uh, movies, and spending time with family. I'm, fun fact, I'm also a saxophonist, so I do that from time to time. Very cool. And so where are you in the UK? I'm based in London. Oh, you're in London? Okay. Yes. Yeah. It's a, uh, I, it's a, you know, love getting over there. It's been, you know, two years since I've been able to travel. Well, actually, yeah, it was December of 2019. I was in London. Um, uh, that's about two years plus ish. Yeah. 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 So it's, uh, yeah. Love, love to explore the, the, the area. So, uh, well, so I know that, so you're a developer technologies MVP. How long have yes. you had your MVP? Uh, this is my first MVP award. Uh, the reason for that probably maybe because I was at Microsoft uh, till November last year. Ah, uh, sure. yes, I, I was Microsoft. Uh, well, uh, in times of uh, timeline about five years, but yeah. you no know, living in between here and there. But I left Microsoft November 2020, then months after became an MVP. Yeah. You know, it's it's funny. It used to be it used to be that you had to be away from Microsoft for a full year before you could even be considered. And, but, but I mean, it's not true. I mean, obviously you, you earned your MVP and I know a couple others that have done the exact same thing. Good friend, Ragnar Heil, for example, same thing. It was like within a month, month and a half. And he earned his MVP because he had been so prolific in doing community activities, which were not part of his day job, they, yeah, they weren't exactly. part of his job description. Mm -hmm. I, I think what matters most is, um, even after outside of doing, um, this day jobs, just do something that you love outside of work, help people out there. And I think that is what mainly counts generally for me as just, just having fun with tech. Right. Well, there's, uh, it's, well, that's, that's the whole thing too, is that, uh, and, and so people understand too, uh, uh, you know, there are plenty of companies, my company, I'm sure your company that are very supportive of the, like the community activities, but mm -hmm. writing for my company blog, like it doesn't count towards that. Microsoft for the MVP, the things that you do are the things that you do above and beyond what you do in your job. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So exactly. it's, uh, yeah. So very cool. So um, another question for you. So this, uh, some folks might not be aware that Microsoft just talked about, maybe just shared it internally that they're actually creating a new focus area specifically around DevOps and GitHub. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, it's actually showed up. I was uh, doing my contributions a few days ago and I saw part of the contribution areas for DevOps was GitHub. And I think that's one thing I, <laughs> coincidentally, it's one of the things I plan to focus on in the next couple of weeks with a friend to actually make some videos uh, doing uh, Kubernetes, Docker, Docker Compose, and all those kind of funny stuff with uh, DevOps. So I think it's came at the right time. <laughs> it's funny. It's like I, I for uh, you know about a third of my career. So, but many years ago, um, 
I was involved in and co-authored three books on software configuration management. I was in, if you remember, uh, Rational Software. Uh, and so ClearCase wrote a book for ClearCase. Uh, yeah, IBM bought them. So it's a different platform <laughs> and everything around that. But we never call it you know, DevOps. And so much of what I did uh, in the IT world in support of engineering organizations would now be slated as DevOps, DevOps. I mean, <laughs> systems in support of engineering and and you know so that's where you know SCM or software configuration management is all around that code management mm -hmm. and that kind. Of, I actually found my way into collaboration technology through that path through kind of a ah. DevOps path. So you know interesting space. So what kind of things are you writing about, actively talking about, and you uh, tons of videos as well. Yes, uh, I mainly focus on doing videos because uh, because I'm a visual learner. Mm -hmm. I try to use my style to teach others also because I realize most folks that I speak to, they love watching the videos. Yes, it's good to write a blog, but someone will probably not sit down and read uh, about 50 pages on how to do DevOps, but they would watch a one hour video yeah. on how to do that. So I prefer to do a video rather than write on it. Yes, when I make the video, I write a short blog post on it and share with you put the video embedded right there so you can watch it right from the website. Uh, but mainly I do videos sometimes, just sometimes I write uh, specifically on some topics. Mainly now I stopped writing about tech. Uh, mainly I just write some motivational tech stuff, uh, but I'm getting back into that little by little, but mainly I focus on videos. I do two videos every week, uh, one on Tuesdays, focusing on things like uh, programming, Azure, program with Azure, program with uh, DevOps in mind and all that. And on Saturdays, I call it one tech minute, where I just try to share a tech topic within one minute, define it, tell people about it, and we have to go get something. That's hard to do. To do Very a one yeah. minute video. I know me that like trying to do something that's short like that, it takes me as long or longer with the edits and trying to compose it all down there to do the one minute video than it would be just to do a 20 minute. Yeah, and in 20 minutes, you can talk all you like, <laughs> but in one minute, you know, you have to be precise at on point. And one thing I say, and one reason I actually started those one minute series was um, when I go for some charts, uh, I tell myself, if you cannot explain the tech in one minute at an eye level, it's probably too out of tech. It's yeah. probably not what we're talking about. So I should be able to tell you in one minute and convince you to be able to know more about the tech. And I was like, okay, this is a challenge I want to take on. Then I started it and then for about seven weeks now i've been on it yeah well, that's great and and so i know so you've been uh, i mean you have a lot of videos that are out there uh, a variety of topics so mm -hmm. so what kind of got you started in doing the videos uh well i'll probably say it's been a an age-long dream i think uh well i got started in tech for officially six ish years ago uh, unofficially, maybe about 15, there about years ago when I was still a young boy. Uh, but I think one thing that got me started making those kind of videos was because the access I had to technology was a privilege. I grew up in Nigeria. Well, arguably, I call it a village uh, where there's not so much internet. I had to go to cyber cafes to actually download stuff to read. I wasn't even coding then. It's just to be able to know about the world. I would go with this three and a half, uh, three quarter inch floppy diskettes. Uh -huh. And then go to the cyber cafe, download some Wikipedia pages, go home, read about them. The next day, go to the cyber cafe and come back. So I was like, okay, this is where I came from. There's a lot of kids who probably think all about computer science is fixing motorbots and yeah. then can, assembling stuff. Can I just interrupt you? Just point out like the, your experience and talking about like that, how, uh, you know, the, the, what you had to go through with older technology stuff, like, like I'm a little bit older, like, that was my experience. That was like, <laughs> that's what it was for the majority of the technology experience. And I mean, as a Gen Xer and coming up like through that is Atari and having an, you know, Apple IIe and, and then a Mac and, and kind of, you know, it, going into technology, I started my career in 1990, um, you know, with, with all, seeing, it, so carrying around floppies, like that was just part of life. That was, was part of, it. I know we're much more advanced now, but uh yeah. I just want to point that out that 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 experience was similar to what uh, <laughs> a lot of us that have you know, come up through this technology being developed yeah. experience. That's interesting because uh, that tech came over to my region where probably after I was born and then I was like, okay, and then I was like, okay, I think the kind of access I have is not what I wanted to say. Well, internet was getting more penetration 
and people were starting to have smarter devices. I can remember I had, I think I had a Sajem phone back then, uh, but uh, I realized, okay, if I make it in this tech, I want to let others know about it, mainly people from the grassroots. So yep. I make videos specifically targeted towards them because what I realized is, yes, I could listen to all these videos from people like Scott Antsuman, uh, back then, uh, Scott Guthrie used to make videos, Phil Ark, all those kind of guys. I listened to them. I understood what they talked about. But if I tell my friends about it, like, meh. So what I tried to do was get the stuff, translate it and digest, and then share that knowledge with my kind of audiences. So that was pretty much what got me started. And then I think I made my first tech video in 2015. Uh, that was when I was on internet at Microsoft. Uh, I made some videos on China. Now, well, I'm not so proud of those videos now if I look at them. <laughs> but a lot has happened between then and now. And I think I've seen the impact because a lot of people just message me and say, hey, I saw your video about getting started with C Sharp. I like it. I like to get an internship. Can you guide me? Those kind of things are just what me going, making such kind of videos. So I mainly focus on making beginner level stuff. If you want, of course, I can teach advanced stuff if I want to. But my core focus is teaching beginners to get started, to come into the lights right? so that they can make their own lives better by doing the tech that I do. Well, that's a, it's a great space. And I mean, I mean, obviously you have a much broader audience of brand new people into the technology arena versus those that are looking for the more focused. And, and a lot of the people that once they get past a certain point, they're more self-directed. They, you know, they, they know where to go for the information. They can take advantage of a lot of the other uh, you know, the, like the Microsoft resources for, mm -hmm. for, for training with that. But for that, the broad user base, it really is up to the community to, to develop a lot of that, that content. One thing I would just point out, like, I, are you going back? Are you removing those old videos? Or are you leaving it all in place? I leave the videos there. Well, I'm not so proud of them, but Hey, it I, shows growth. I, exactly. Right. I, so <laughs> I, so I, I've had this argument with some people like, so I've been blogging on the same site since 2002 and I have gone through and because it does impact your performance and SEO to have the, all this old content, if there's no traffic and I've gone through and I've removed, like if I do a blog post where I'm talking about doing a conference in a week, you know, and coming up and that because I'll remove those, which there's no value, but an article that's written or I will walk through where I explain a piece of technology, I'm leaving it there because mm -hmm. it's, it's part of the, the history, it's the, having the archives, definitely, having that path. And, and same thing with the video. I think it's important mm -hmm. to leave that history out there. Yeah, I definitely love the uh, One thing I, I learned also is uh, as I improve on myself in making these videos, I like to go back and just say, oh, Dara, you've done a good job. Pat myself on the back. And then also if someone comes and tells me, hey, Dara, I want to start making videos. I only have a phone and a very crappy laptop. I'll tell you, go watch my videos from six years back. My yeah. audio was terrible. Terrible yeah. is an understatement. Well, it's like you're <laughs> but, I'm telling you before we started recording. It's like I was using one of those. Uh, it, what was it? A uh, little little flip phone. Uh, the camcorders. Not, not even a flip phone. It's just a a flip camera. So it was oh, a yeah. little tiny, like 780, you know, um, <laughs> camera. And I would do that stuff on the road, and I just turn it around and interview myself or interview people. <laughs> the microphone was on the opposite side. So it was great if I was filming you and narrating it, but if I flipped it around, then I'd sound like I was off in the distance. So the sound was terrible, usually. Uh, yeah. Well, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, hey, you have to well, start somewhere and capture definitely, the content. Definitely, definitely. And now I make videos, I do podcasts, I do lots of stuff. I even get to review microphones now. So I get lots of toys. I got mics here. I got some in the box over there. It's just yeah. fun now. For those that haven't seen, like out, out on your site and stuff, you there's some pictures, and I think you had out on Instagram, like a picture of your studio, your setup there, you know. Yeah. And it's and I know a lot of people are really good about that. I think that they're just a suggestion. There should be more sharing, more content about how to set up like your rig, like your your, your setup. For there's a lot of people like I, I do a tremendous amount of videos, but I I do it one way. I I I want to improve the quality of the things that I go and do. But I just haven't made the time to go and research and figure the stuff out. And I would be much better. Like if you had a video that walked through, here's my setup. I'm going to walk you through each of the pieces and why. Like I would watch that, that video. Okay. I okay. Uh, that I, I made an old one that was way back in Nigeria. But of course, because it's improved, I need to make an updated version of it. Uh, but of course, now that you remind me, I'll definitely make one just because of you. Awesome. <laughs>
Yeah, <laughs> let, let me know when that's live. I because I, I want that stuff. But uh, well, other stuff. So here we are at the beginning of Microsoft's fiscal year, and so they've got mm-hmm. like the announcements and things that are out there. And of course, we've got Ignite that's happening later in the year. So what's the what's the stuff that you're excited about that you're most passionate about? What's what's coming up? Obviously, be aware of NDAs are in place. Definitely, you know, so definitely. I what think... you talk about. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't gonna talk about it if I am public. Right. <laughs> yeah, I, I think the thing I'm most excited for, even though I've not gotten my hands on it yet, is GitHub Copilot. That AI that writes code for you. I wanna see how cool it is. Uh, code space is another thing I really wanna see. Having to just think of not having a super powerful computer, mm-hmm. and then just having to write that code on the cloud. Windows thirty six five. I think I'm going to love it because my machine is crying for a change yep. and I don't want to change it. So I can have a powerful machine in the cloud, maybe 32 gigabyte of RAM, one terabyte of drive, just sit in there. I can remote from literally any device. I'm excited for that. Um, I think those three, then of course, GitHub Actions is one thing I'm really excited about. I've been learning about it and making uh, some practice with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, in coming weeks, I'll probably make some videos or blog posts about it. Uh, but I'm enjoying it right now. I'm little by little moving it from Azure DevOps, kind of, mm-hmm. uh, and moving into GitHub Actions because I think that is where the focus is going. Yeah. Uh, well, I might be wrong, but it's fun to learn anyways. And having that kind of um, mix in between the old Azure DevOps and the new GitHub Action, I think it's fun for me. And of course, Copilot, I want to see that. I want to actually put my hands on it and actually write code with it. Um, yeah, pretty much Windows 365, uh, Windows 11 is actually more fun to work with. Yep. I actually bit the bullet and installed it on all my machines. Oh, wow. <laughs> all okay. of it. Yes. Any, any problems or has it been? No problems. Oh, it's been yeah. smooth and on point. I use it for my, actually, because my work machine is a personal build ish kind of machine. So yep. I actually installed it on my work machine too. No issues whatsoever. All my work apps do fine. If there is any issue, I create a VM in the cloud and I remote into it, and then life is back to normal. Yeah, that's the worst that could happen. That's uh, you know I have uh, so I also worked at Microsoft. I was there for three and a half years, and I'm back in the when I was you know we were required to dog food, and I had ah. I had a lot of customer facing meetings all the time. It constantly broke things. I couldn't get into meetings that I was the host of, and and just a lot of different problems with that. And I've always been. Um, uh, I like being out ahead, trying things out, but mm-hmm. uh, for my production system, you know, I'm always a little wary. I'm, I'm like one phase behind that. I pay attention to those blog posts that compare, you know, and talk about <laughs> gaps yeah. and integrations. I've read a couple of two, two articles, two blog posts that try to do a comparison. Hey, here's what you lose by with the stage that Windows 11 is. It's like, or it really wasn't much of a difference. What? Yeah. So. Yeah, because mainly the tools I use, I probably never ever see some of the stuff they complain about because my tools are just my tools. Yeah. I probably never see the start menu more than twice a day. Yeah, yeah, it's an awesome start menu. Don't get me wrong, but I don't say it. I do my Windows R, type in my command, boom, off I go. <laughs> and right. then I'm up uh, every day. So, I, and I think for me, being a developer, I want to actually be there to give the feedback to Microsoft. I want a part of it that make Windows better for me. Right. I'm not doing it because... Not because I like Microsoft, but because I want to make Windows better for me. That is why I'm using it. The logs have been sent to Microsoft. Yeah. Even if I don't give the feedback to get the logs anyways, because I opted in for that diagnostic data. And uh, even though I was a Microsoft, I dug food a lot. Uh, because uh, since Windows 10, no, Windows 8 10 car preview mm-hmm. was the time I started dog fooding uh, Windows. Uh, I was still a student back in the university back then. That was about nine years ago. I would ping the DX guy then, you know, I'd be like, hey, my Windows is not working. It was my only laptop, the only thing I had in the entire world. And I would still install that stuff on it. And I think for me, it was just fun. I don't mind breaking stuff. What that could happen? Reinstall Windows. Well, again, that's one of the things as an MVP, I mean, being able to, to go and find things that are broken, if there's a workaround, or if there's not a workaround and to, to, to talk about that stuff, it's providing the feedback back to Microsoft, mm-hmm. of course, Definitely. but it's also providing that feedback, that guidance on how I worked around that problem for the community as well mm-hmm. and to talk through yeah. that stuff. So, well, very cool. Well, listen, I really appreciate your time getting to know you and, and yeah, we'll definitely have to talk. Let me know when that, that blog post goes or the video Definitely. Goes live I'll, 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 I'll be watching that for sure. 
But folks that want to be able to follow you or get in touch with you, what are the best ways to reach you? Uh, I am Daryl Ladak on all social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, uh, where else? TikTok. Yeah, I'm on TikTok. YouTube. Are you doing dance do videos on TikTok? Is that uh, that's kind I of do tech. <laughs> Sometimes I just uh, do a random nice video, but mainly I just post. Saying is, I think there's an opportunity to work in whatever the the latest dance move is with tech. So somehow, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah those dance things i do with my wife on our other accounts uh, yeah. and then we just you know have a bit of fun uh moving the body <laughs> uh well hey it was great getting to know you and uh we'll connect yeah. soon definitely, definitely. Wow. Wow.